Champions and former world number ones. Nozomi Okuhara are coming from 8.14 and 14.18 down in that decider to set up a final against Pompumi Chochuwong of Thailand. The former champion, of course, Nozomi Okuhara, won the title five years ago. My goodness me, what a credit those two players were in that last match to the sport of badminton. Played in great spirit and uh, wonderful badminton on show as well. So that's five of our semi-finals uh, completed. And we know that we'll have an all Japanese uh, women's doubles final. And that's the first time in 43 years that's going to happen here at the All England final. Our next match is the second of the men's doubles. We know that the defending champions are already through, but who will they meet in the final? Will it be an all Japanese affair with uh, Komora and Sonoda? Or will the Danes, Kim Astrup, and Anna's Rasmussen come through. Well, there is the draw, as you can see, from quarterfinal stage. And three Danes, two pairs from Japan. And uh, by semi-final stage, it was two and two. Two from Denmark, two from uh, Japan. And the defending champions, Endo and Watanabe, safely through in a very comfortable match. And for Hiroyuki Endo, it means tomorrow will be a fifth men's doubles final here at the All England Championships. You to Watanabe and has also uh, ensured four finals in four years across two different disciplines here at the All England. So as you can see, this will be a tenth meeting between these two pairs. And uh, whilst uh, Komora and Sonoda have won five of the previous nine, I can tell you that Astrup and Rasmussen have won the last two encounters, including that last one, which was the quarterfinal of the Indonesian Masters 500 event of 2019. 58 minutes for that victory in Jakarta. And for the Danes, well, they are in great form because two weeks ago, they won the Swiss 300 no, red. events. Red. red, it's black. That's right. So, so the Japanese pair have chosen ends and that far end of the court as we all look down uh, to start this semi-final encounter. So the number three seeds, Takeshi Komura and Keigo Sonoda against unseeded Danes, Kim Astrup and Anas Rasmussen. Well, it's been a long time since we've seen this Japanese pair in international badminton. Exactly a year ago, last time they played was this All England Championships of 2020, and when they lost in the second round to Ivanov and Sozanov who went through to the semi-final stage. Kego Sonoda uh, turned 31 last month. He's six days younger, actually, than his uh, partner, uh, born in uh, Kumamoto Prefecture on the island of Kushu. There you can see his partner, Takeshi Kamora, uh, born in Saga on the northwest of the island of Kushu. Number five in the world rankings at the moment have been as high as two. And looking at their path through to today's semi-final, well, it was the Olympic bronze medalist, the number eight seeds, Marcus Ellis and Chris Langridge, where they went the full distance. But look at the scoreline in the second and third game. Uh, quite extraordinary match it was. Chris Langridge got warned by the umpire, got a yellow card, then a red card, and. I think that really disturbed them a little bit because Kamora and Sonoda absolutely raced away in that deciding game, 21-8. Kim Astrup, the left-hander, uh, turned 29 exactly two weeks ago, born in Herning in Denmark. And uh, they're currently number 13 in the world ranking, but did spend a total of three weeks at number five, their highest ranking across two different spells. Anna's Rasmussen turned 32 last month from Oda, just south of Aarhus. Making their eighth consecutive appearance at the All England Championships, the Danes, as a combination. And prior to this year, they'd never got past the second round 
Here they are in the semi-final. In the first round, they beat teammates. In the second round, beat the number six seeds, Ranky Reddy and Shetty. Quarter-final against Christo and Toma Popov. So the three games against the Indian pair, a pair that I think has huge potential. So our umpire for this one is Bert van Horenbeck from Belgium and Ilka Venio from Finland is our service judge. So a tenth meeting between these two pairs. Well, I'm wondering if I was the only one who was surprised that the last two occasions they played, it was won by the Danes, because I think in Ladies general, the Mara Japanese Lions. pair have Takeshi been more Kabura, consistent. Keigo Sonoda, Japan. Oh. And on my left, Kim Astrup and Anders Kerib Rasmussen, Denmark. Kim Astrup to serve to Takeshi Kamura. Lovell. Play. So the left and right handed combination from Denmark getting this semi final oh. underway against the World Championship bronze medalists from 2017, Takeshi Kimura and Keigo Sonoda. Morton, were you surprised as well by the head-to-head -head match up between these two? Mm, not really? Yeah, not really, yes and no. Um, I think... Uh, the Japanese pair, um, they have been extremely steady. However, I also think that uh, the last two years, they have not been as good as they kind of used to be. I think they've been dropping a little bit in, in pace and power. Um, and as you say, it coincided with the fact that the Danes had a very good spell and went all the way up to number five on the world ranking at that time. Yeah, good point. Well, for those who haven't seen Kimura and Sonoda play before, they're a very, what I would call, busy pair, aren't they? Very energetic. <laughs> and the man at the back there, Kego Sonoda, yeah. never seems to stand still. No. Nope. He has to when he's serving or receiving, <laughs> because that's the rules of badminton. But, but that's about it. <laughs> that's about it. Always on the move, always fidgeting and jumping up and down on the spot. and. But it's funny you're saying that because I've, of course, been watching him a little bit in the tournament here. And I actually think he's not as busy as he used to be. Do you know, funnily enough, I thought the same thing too. Yeah, it's, it's, it's quite funny. Yeah, but let me tell you, that's not as busy as he used to be. <laughs> no, 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 no. This is very quiet. <laughs> Three, two. Well, before semi-finals got underway, Morton, I was busily researching in case we had an all-Danish men's doubles final. Well, we can't possibly have that because nope. the other Danes have already lost. Uh, but I can tell you that that happened 11 years ago. There was an all-Danish men's doubles final. There has never been an all-England, all-Japanese men's doubles final. No, I can believe that. Yeah. Well, that would make sense, wouldn't it? Because Endo and Watanabe winning last year were the first Japanese pair ever to win exactly. the All-England title. Yeah. There have been four All-Japanese men's doubles finals on the World Tour since 2018. Yeah, 2018, and that's the two pairs we just mentioned. Yeah, and the last time was at the German Open of two years ago. I can't recall that Japan has got two pairs as good as what uh, they have right now no. in the men's doubles no. uh, over at least, let's say, 40 years or so. Four, oh. 
Well, we were watching this Danish pair earlier in the week, weren't we, Morton, when they played against Ranky Reddy and Shetty. Yes. And you were talking about the fact that Kim Astrup uh, sometimes can get a little bit nervous. We've seen it yeah. in other matches. But I think in a match like this, where they're the perceived underdogs, they're not seeded, their opponents are the number three seeds. Yeah. I think he won't be so nervous and he will just absolutely go for it. I concur. I, I think it's it's very much to the uh, advantage of the uh, two Danish players that they are perceived as, as underdogs in this situation because, yes, we have seen on a number of occasions where Kim Astrup simply completely freeze. Yeah. And then they're not playing well, let me put it that way. Because he's the one that's going to create um, all the openings for the for the Danish pair. And if he suddenly doesn't dare to play, then uh, the pair is in trouble. Yeah. Quick glimpse of Tan Kim Ha. Former Malaysian player, now coaching in Japan. There he is. Gosh, he's coached all over the place. Coached in Korea, Malaysia, India. Yes. England. Did he coach yeah. in England? I yes. Think so, yes. Yeah, now Japan. Yeah, he was back in Malaysia for a little while before he then again left uh, for um, for Japan. Uh, that's good play. That's yeah. clever, clever that's good play. play. So yeah, that bounced. Uh, the six. Oh. Umpire spotted it. And Kamora deciding to put the shuttle away anyway. Yeah, we're not playing tennis. So where do you think the key area of this match is going to be, Morton? It's, it's all about whether Kim Astrup can control the the front court for the Danes. If not, then I think the uh, Japanese pair will win. However, can he control? I think we have a, an even match. So is that taking on Kimura? Because I, I think Kimura likes to go to the net more than Sonoda. He does, yes. Um, Again, I think Kamora was uh, a lot, lot stronger at the front of the court, let's say three, four years ago than what he is today. But uh, not saying that he is, um, he's, he's, a, he's a bad player because he's definitely not. I just think he's dropped about five or 10%, but uh, he's easier to take on at the net today than a few years ago. What a super flick serve. Yeah, a wonderful serve there. Totally deceived, Rasmussen. And clever because he's playing against uh, the drift. So it's a clever to, to use the flick serve now and again. See, that's where he's good. Yeah, Kamora. Very, yeah, very good. Big mistake from Rasmussen to try to do that. So the flat, the fast flat exchanges is yeah. something the Danes have got to be aware of because he's, he's good at that. He was like one or two inches below the, ne uh, the net yeah. and he had to play slightly upwards and that's mm. enough. So he got punished straight away. Yeah. Well, the Danish combination have actually won a Super 1000 event before. That's the... 2018 China Super 1000 in Changzhou. Got very famous for the celebration. Yes. <laughs> uh, so, um, I dread to think what they'd do if they won the All England. <laughs> celebration wise. Yes. 10, 9. Oh. Yeah, that's good by Kimura. Yeah. Oh. 
once again. Oh, that's just out. Oh, we have a challenge. I think that's a wasted challenge. So do I. I saw that as out. close because Hawkeye taking its time. Here we go. Yeah, indeed it was out. Challenge unsuccessful. One challenge remaining. Serves over. Ten all. Play. net cord from the Danes and it means that Astrop and Rasmussen go to the mid-game interval with the advantage 47 shots So Jakobi, the Danish coach there, Morton, what was the instruction or advice? Um, it was actually trying to avoid uh, the flat exchanges, either block it in front of them or lift it over them and, and try not to get too much into it. Not saying that you should avoid it completely, but, you know, be aware. In this rally, the weakness of the Japanese player is slightly exposed. The fact that uh, the attack is not as strong as it used to be, the power yeah. is simply not uh, as strong as it used to be. And that means that the Danish player is feeling fairly comfortable in their defence. As long as they have enough length and height on their, on their lifts, they are in, in a good position. Not saying that they can win by only playing defensive. They will definitely try to counter-attack it and go into attack, but they are not scared of lifting. Yeah. Which means that the service situation is going to be absolutely crucial for the Danish pair. Because if they can win on the service situation, in most of the cases, I think uh, they're standing a very good chance. Oh, service fall called too high. Called on Kegel Sonoda. Oh. 
I could see him lifting his left arm before he hit the shuttle, so of course the shuttle was higher when he actually made contact. Oof, that snatched. Yeah, the Danish pair is making very much use of that left-right combination. 15, and of course, uh, 11. I'm uh, having a little bit of an advantage because I can hear when they're doing it. There is a special sign that Kim, Kim and Anders is using when they're doing it, and I can, of course, hear it. Mm. Oh, that's a good spell because it's six of the last seven points for the Danish pair. See, the Japanese pair simply cannot finish it. Sonoda is trying and trying from the back. Whoa. Finds the net. Yeah. They are hitting against the drift, the Japanese pair. They might have more success with their attacking play. Yeah, on the when, other side. When they change ends, yes. I absolutely agree. But the Danes are finding good length, and uh, as you say, then the Japanese pair playing against the drift is finding it even harder to kill. Mm. Nine, ten down they were. Seven of eight points to lead. Sixteen, eleven. That's wide. Well left. Really well left. So easy to be carried away and try to intercept in a situation like that. Good serve. Yeah, perfect serve. Yeah. And that's what the Japanese pair have to do. They have to be very, very good around the service situation. Serving and receiving. But look at that serve, skimming the top of the tape. Yeah, perfect. was trying to get that to the back of the court but it was just woefully short yeah he got caught oh, that's a good spell here yeah from uh, Kamora serving he's doing very well a little bit of a lucky interception as Rasmussen was a bit too slow on reacting to that one but uh, nevertheless it's a good point for the Japanese yeah four straight points and now just one point in it that was a good opportunity for Astrop he should have killed that one play too careful he who dares wins yep. gotta take your chances it's coming here It was uh, too late. That was later in the in the rally. Another good serve. Yeah, that was a good spell. Yeah. Good serving from Kimura. And I like his interception as well on the third shot. A bit unlucky not to finish it. suddenly just turned it around, haven't they, Kamara and Sonoda? Yeah, they get more to work with because uh, they're putting more pressure on the service situation, which means that the Danes are getting into more trouble. Oh, 
Oh, that's good defence. There's the flat exchanges that suit the Japanese pair. That's a good change of tactics there from Anas Rasmussen. Good variety in his attack. And that was one of the things that Jakob Hoy was saying. The very last thing he was saying to Anas was, remember, even on your second shot from the back, we need to have some variation. Seems yeah. like he's listening. Yeah. Fast drop. Played to perfection. Yeah. Yeah, cool good. I think it's a good challenge. Mm, I'm not so sure, Martin. You're not so sure. Mm. I think it looks close. Here we go. Oh, challenge. It was close, wasn't it? But you've got your glasses on again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Belgium umpire, but then Horenbeck, one of our new semi-professional umpires, and he understands a bit of uh, Danish. <laughs> yeah. Oh, well played. Very well played. Yeah, it's, it's clever to go for good angle here. Look at that. Getting Astrup completely out of position rather than trying to go down the centre using the side of the court seemed to be a very good idea and what a comeback here from uh, the Japanese pair yeah I thought they would have kind of lose this opening game now it, look, it looks really good for them yeah absolutely eight of the last ten points having lost seven of the previous eight amazing turnaround drop oh that's going wide yeah that's a careless lift yeah and it's game point opportunities for Kamara and Sonoda with his backhand there. Yeah, that's brilliant. And 10 of the last 12 points are from 11-16 down and Takeshi Kamura and Keigo Sonoda storm back to win this opening game. 21-18. My goodness me, what a fluctuation in fortunes. 22 minutes of wonderful badminton. Twenty seconds. 
Well, from what I could hear in that two-minute timeout, Tanakim Her was talking mostly about serves with Kimura and Sonoda, and yeah. talking about guiding the shuttle. When Sonoda was serving, he was asking Kimura to, on the third shot, just guide it a little bit more. Yeah, it was very interesting because uh, I think they're winning most of these flat exchanges, but uh, Tan Kim Ho was actually advising them to uh, perhaps do the first drive. Oh, that's a beauty. That's an amazing smash. Um, but then the next one laid off and, and, and block it, which I think is a little bit strange as the uh, Japanese pair has been doing so well Yeah. in the flat. And on the Danish side, uh, Jakob Hoy was saying that uh, it was a bit unfortunate the Japanese pair managed to get in and control the net uh, at crucial times in, in all the rallies, and that's why they were losing the points. So did he not say what they should be doing, or just pointed out what they've done wrong? <laughs> he was saying that uh, perhaps, um, especially now when they're playing against uh, the drift, to use one of the fast attacking lifts and then not back off, but still stand uh, at the front and see if they can counter attack as soon as possible. But I'm not sure that the, the pair really was buying into the idea, to be very honest. Right. shot off the net shot when your yes. opponent's standing there. Exactly. Yeah. It's courageous play. Oh. Yes. Ah, he's Sonoda is selling his partner on that lift. attacking yeah that's awesome play we've got a question the smash though from Kimura haven't yeah. been Morton yeah cross court yeah and uh, not too powerful either and right into the forehand you're asking for trouble yeah But interesting to see that the two Danish players are not really backing off. They're standing their ground in their defensive stance. Oh, my goodness. Yeah. It's good playing from Diego Sonoda. Three, four. And these points are so nice to get, aren't they? You know, mm. you don't have to work that hard for them. Yeah. You just have to have really, really solid return. certainly wasn't going to come back, was it? <laughs> nope. <laughs> Five, three. <laughs> oh. 
over. Four, five. I think Astro was a little bit caught in the idea of going into the flat exchange. He had a very good opportunity to just lay it off, take the pace off and get a, a, a let's say, a normal attacking situation out of that. Yeah, he was alert to that flick serve, Kim Astro. Six, four. So difficult, isn't it, Morton? Because you know, if it's if it's loose at all, it's going to get punished, <laughs> and so you've got to go for these skimming uh, drives and pushes. But inevitably, you will make some mistakes. Yes, that's well recovered from Astrup. Both the Danish players uh, attacked the net, and suddenly the lift came. So over. Good recovery. Seven five. But I think really well spotted uh, by uh, the Japanese players. That's a great shot. Yeah. What a super shot from Keigo Sonoda. My goodness me, that forehand defence and just guiding it across court. Uh, it's coming here. That's the beauty. Yeah. But that's where the, the Danes want to use that left right combination. Yeah. And uh, Sonoda just. Uh, Guessed it really well that Astrup was going down to cover to his forehand side, and then of course that's opening up the gap at the net. But that's well spotted. the second time on Kegel Sonoda. Both times were too high. Yeah, well, he was right to go for it, in my opinion, Morton. Yes, he must. Shot well, didn't he, Rasmussen? Oh, yeah. oh, I think he's all right. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> yeah that will definitely Nine, need eight. the court attendant on. Both the Danes were encroaching forward, and there was a huge gap at the back of the court. He disappeared <laughs> <laughs> out of the picture. I 
think the Japanese pair is really getting a, a good hold on this match. They're, they're looking very strong lately in this uh, second game. Even though the scores are level, you just sense that they're yeah. getting the upper hand? Yes. Yeah. I think Astrup is trying too much. Mm. And he it's not really working out for him. He must trust his partner a little bit more. On a few occasions, he's been stepping in in front of Anas, and it's not really been working out. A little bit too desperate. Oh, they're challenging that. And this game brought us some challenges called it. I didn't really see that one, Morton. No, but body language is telling me it's out. Oh, well, call the line. No, it catch the line. It's just the way that uh, Kamora was acting. I thought maybe he thought it was out. Went to the kit box. The way he did it looked very decisive. Sonoda and it is the number three seeds Kamura and Sonoda that have the advantage here at the mid-game interval having already won the first <laughs> Well, it appeared that Tamkin Her was suggesting that the Japanese pair should uh, defend and keep lifting rather than drive defence. What yeah. did, did you get anything from? No, I, I uh, agree Yakupon? with you. I, I didn't. Yeah, I, I did. So they um, they still want to, especially when they are in an attacking situation, trying to take the pace off now and again, in in order to make some variations on it. Yeah. Not just go full blast the whole time. That's a nice net shot. Well played by Kimura. Oh, oh well, that's that nice. Work. That is nice. What a smash. Great power, great placement. Yeah. There was a risky shot. Went 100% for it. Brilliant. Yeah, came never even reacted to it, almost. Going back to Tan Kim Ho's coaching there, 
Were you surprised at that? I was quite surprised because, the, as you've been pointing out, the Japanese pair have been winning the fast exchanges. Why tell them just to lift and give it height? I don't know. I, I am just as puzzled as, as you are. Yeah. If you've got a winning tactic, why change it? Unless you start not winning with it, then you need to change it. But whilst it's winning for you, surely you keep to it. Yeah, the Danes complaining that uh, the Japanese touched on the way out. It was called out on the back line. Everybody agrees on that. No, bring it up to me. Okay, I'll bring it up to you. If I would like to tell him, if he touches it, he should say. But if I oh, yes. Say, but he, he's, he, he's, he's apologizing. Anas is convinced that it touched one of the players on the way out. Yeah, and I think he's right. And Kego Sonoda is apologising, which has been pointed out by Rasmussen. He's apologising because, look. Yeah, oh, yeah, yes. yeah, he's touching on the, on the left hand. Yeah. Left hand on the way out. No question. Well... Got rid of some frustration with that final <laughs> shot, Rasmussen. You can say that again. <laughs> you can say that again. The calm man suddenly lost it a bit there. This looks like a decisive move to me. Yeah, but that's what I say. I, I sensed it to six, seven points ago that yeah. uh, Japanese kind of getting the upper hand, even though it was uh, all even at the time. Twelve, fifteen. I gather Rasmussen is a, a really good team member. Is that right? He's, he's he is. always good in the team environment. He's he's always good for a joke. He's always having a, always in a good mood and uh, pleasant, positive. He's a great guy. I, I've known him for uh, 16, 17 years now, mm. and um, always a positive person. He's a nice guy. I actually been coaching both Anas and Kim when they were younger. Well, a couple of points have certainly put a different complexion on this. A couple more to get back level could make this very interesting indeed. just sense was an important rally more than 16, yeah. 13. from a Danish point of view so much more appealing 14 15 rather than 16 13 yeah so um, the Japanese pairs just edging closer and closer Solid play. Good play by Kamora. Yeah, the first one wasn't a power smash at all. It was just in a downward direction. Just making sure it's dropping below the tape. And then followed forward. Yes. Good solid play. And yet again, a good surf. Yeah. They're solid at the moment. 18, 13. It's tough for the Danes to do anything about this. Look at that surf. Mm. Dropping again below the tape. Rasmussen have to play in an upwards direction. So the number three seeds just three points away from her first ever All England final. Oh, that's super. 
Yeah. What a shot. I like the placement. Yeah. And that's, I think, sometimes when you look at uh, Rasmussen, when he's attacking a lot from the back, a lot is going towards the centre of the court. I like here where the sideline is used as well. It's match point opportunities now for Takeshi Kamora and Keigo Sonoda. Yeah, they've been very, very solid. Second half of this second game, I think they've played extremely well. Service fault called and it landed out. That's his third service fault. This time, second time of asking, and the number three seeds Takeshi Kamora and Keigo Sonoda beats Kim Asprey and Anas Oras. Rasmussen in two straight games, 21-18, 21-14. That match lasting just shy of 45 minutes. So the Danish dream is over. It will be an all-Japanese final tomorrow. The first ever at the All England Championships. The fifth time since the inception of the HSBC BWF World Tour that two Japanese pairs will play for a men's doubles title. Well, they were good on the big points too. I think Kamura and Sonoda. So they go at least one better than they did two years ago when they were in the semi-final. Uh, but they will be up tomorrow against the defending champions Hiroyuki Endo and Yuta Watanabe. Remarkable fifth men's doubles final at the All England Championships for Endo tomorrow. But for Kamora and Sonoda, tomorrow will be a first All England final.
So that confirms that it's an all Japanese men's doubles final tomorrow between, between the number three and four seeds, Komura and Sonoda, the number three seeds against the defending champions, Endo and Watanabe. So we have an all Japanese women's doubles final and all Japanese men's doubles.